since it was raining and dark last night, you didn't get to see where we stayed. Except for the inside, the Quinto Real Hotel. Beautiful place, used to be a monastery 500 years ago. And look at there, still the church that's attached to it. The church and the monastery, still a functioning church. And I'll take you in just to see the lobby in the entryway and where we're having breakfast. Here's the lobby area. And look at this area where we eat. We did show you this last night, but it's out in the courtyard and they have a seal and roof that they put over it on rainy days or winter, but this is all used to be outside courtyard and it still is in the summertime. complex because it was very large and included these little rooms, the courtyards, uh, and there were many activities. The nuns had to wash the clothes, they had to pray every morning, and, and also they had special prayers for the Holy Conception of our name. And uh, the bishop is... See that fearless leader of this group, and here comes our group. We left our hotel, which was a monastery, a convent, and now we're walking along here. There you can see everybody. Bright and early this morning. Morning, Bill Jim. Good morning. Making the tortillas here. Homemade tortillas, look at that. As you can see. So you can have a whole meal for one dollar. See? A bunch of tortillas. I said you must eat them in Amanda. Let it keep running. I can edit it. Buenos dias. Buenos dias, Okay, I, I want one of the ones in the corn husks. I think one of these here. Tamale. Señora, ¿qué tal? Buenos ¿Qué tamales tiene? Mole y de dulce. Mole y dulce. Mole y okay. dulce. We'll mole and sweet. Okay. <laughs> We'll get this. Okay. okay, so here we got, it's not in water, it's steamed. It's steamed. See, and so she's going to give me this. Okay. Like a ear of corn. This is, this is breakfast, breakfast for the average person. Gracias. Oh, no, no, we just take it like this. So here's for you. Gracias. No, it's not hot. No, no. So remember he talked, he told us this is baby Jesus in the corn husk to keep baby Jesus warm, remember? We learned that from uh, Joseph Toon in Mon San Miguel. He said they have this in the corn husk to keep, it's baby Jesus staying warm. Is that yogurt? Very hot, it's very hot. De quesos con gelatinas. To cool it down eh, a little bit. De coco, de coco con... Oh, that's mole, that's got that chocolate that's in it. So, Let's got chocolate. Anybody want to try it? Yeah. There you go. It's steamed. It's not boiled. It's steamed. With it's chocolate in there? It's in mole. mole. That's yeah. what we're going to learn to cook today. Oh. It's got about 20 ingredients, but chocolate's one of the ingredients. 
Oh, and you can actually taste it. Yeah, you can. want to taste it? It's delicious. Yeah. No, you can use your fingers or this, whatever you want. Well, I like it. I'll probably get one. You want to get one? I'll probably get one. If I... They're good. It's not spicy. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Can I get one of those? No, no. Anybody else want to try it? Very good. This is breakfast on the street in Puebla, what the people do here every morning. Let me put some of this on here for Mike. I know he won't want to. Now going through the museum of the cathedral. We have here a relic of the Blessed Sebastian de of Aparicio, and there is a piece of his bone, his arm bone. There's our folks coming across the road. It's <laughs> cute. We're gonna now walk through this colonnaded area. Look how beautiful they are, how elegant. And the building, all the pieces of the building were imported from Paris. This is the old orphanage and church on the street corner where we're going to have lunch. And I love getting these kind of shots. But this is our restaurant, the Entre Tierras. And we're going to have a wonderful lunch here with filet mignon and wine and so on. And here we are coming in the entrance. And as you walk in, there's like an altarpiece to the right-hand side. Absolutely gorgeous. So we, we just wanted to say happy anniversary to you. And they told me that they are still both very happy. <laughs> and uh, we're glad, we're very honored that you would spend your anniversary with us. When people ask us, how long have you married? I always say, not long enough. <laughs> so congratulations and God bless you. Thank you. What a dessert. It almost looks like a peacock. After dinner, lunch, I should say, just walking through the streets of Puebla, enjoying the place. The rain stopped and it's nice. And look at that park bench and the menu. And oh my goodness, who is this? <laughs> mm. 
There's our group going into the church here. This is the Rosary Chapel where we're going to have Mass and pray the Rosary. You won't believe it. Convent, St. Domingo. Given a very special blessing of being able to pray the Rosary here in this Rosary Chapel. You've never seen anything like this Rosary Chapel. Just a couple quick thoughts. I'm glad we could share this place with you for a rosary and for mass. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it summarizes all of chapter 11. Mm -hmm. Chapter 11 talks of all the saints of the Old Testament, those who were killed by the sword, those who conquered, established kingdoms, all these things. And Hebrews 12, 1 says, Seeing that you have so great, great a cloud of witnesses, run the race without any encumbrance. This is sports terminology. He's using a thing of the Olympics from the times of the Bible. And if you think that when they ran in the Olympics, they ran totally naked so that they would not be encumbered or tripped up or tangled up in anything. And the writer of Hebrews says, run the race and cast aside everything, every bit of thing, sin or encumbrance that would keep you from running the race and winning. And it says you're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. This is like stepping into the game and having a look at the cloud of witnesses. It's giving you the image of a stadium with all of the people in the stands, a cloud of witnesses who are looking down. And these folks have already lived this life. They've already been, many of them, martyred, many of them tortured, and they're now in heaven, and they're in the stands, in the theaters, the stands of the, of the arenas, and they're cheering you on. So when you look up here, look at all the seats that they have. It's, they're there to cheer you on, and that's what you're supposed to see when you come in here so that you get the courage to go out and run the little race. Another thing I had a thought of is that when I was a Protestant, I used to think Catholic wasted a lot of money to make things like this. Why do Catholics waste so much money like this? And then I realized when I became Catholic, I sat in St. Peter's one time and looked around and I said, I think it gives the Lord great joy. What does he think about this? I think it gives him great joy that his people love him so much that they want to create such beauty to honor him. I'll give you an example of my grandson, Dominic. If he spends a whole year working and taking care, doing chores and making money so that he can make me a very special gift. And all year he works hard and he makes something very special for me. And then he gives it to me and I say, Dominic, this was a waste of money. You should have done something else with this. I would break his heart. I, as a grandfather, when my grandson would do something like this, my response would be, Dominic, that is so wonderful that you loved me so much that you would do such hard work and costly things to do this beautiful thing for me. Thank you very much. And I think that's the same way God, when he sees something like this that we create in his honor because we love him so much, that I think it gives him great joy. So I think they're going to let us come in here if you want to take a look. See all the saints up there looking down at you. Please watch part two. We had so much going on today it wouldn't fit in one video. And the second video also has our cooking class where we learn how to cook mole.